Hi, this is James with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. We're out here today with James as well with his Keystone, um, talking about the system we put together for him and his installation that he did with his project. So can you just give us a little bit of background on uh, what your needs were as far as the system is concerned? Okay, well, um, we uh, are full-timing, so we, we sold our home and we're traveling the country. Uh, we wanted to kind of stay away from some of the uh, full-service RV sites that we were limited to, but we wanted to live comfortably and, and have a lot of the amenities of home, amenities of a full hookup site. So when I went to uh, designing a system or trying to have a system designed, I wanted to have something that would basically provide full-service electrical to the entire unit and not have to spend a lot of time and effort budgeting our electricity usage. Right, so um, basically what we put together, um, I think you have like almost 2,000 watts of solar on the roof, right? Yeah, 1,950. Okay, and then you've uh, effectively got 15 kilowatt hours of batteries, right? Yes. And a dual inverter configuration. This particular system, which we'll show here in a second, is a 48 volt system we set up with two quattro inverters, a uh, balanced split phase configuration with the auto transformer on the output. Um, there's a dual AC input. Uh, you have a generator on board, right? So um, basically uh, we've got 50 amp input as well as uh, 120 volt. In so 50 amp is a 240 volt input. Um, we have 120 volt input as well um, through an input auto transformer. Um, from the generator and then you kind of manipulated that a little bit with the transfer switch and allowed it so you can plug into like a 30 amp service as well with uh, yeah and, and be able to charge from both uh, both inverters. inverters at the same time yeah that's a, it's a little bit of a trick uh, with a system like this uh, being able to charge so we've got what DC to DC converters from the uh, batteries to to feed the 12 volt yes um, and then obviously the two inverters to feed pretty much the entire rig. Any limitations you have? I haven't really found any limitations yet. We've been able to run everything. In, in fact, uh, I've had a hard time finding enough dummy loads to cause you know uh, any any resource contention. So uh, we've been completely thrilled with the system so far, and it's met all of our needs. I guess to be specific, as far as the loads are concerned, like you can run anything in the rig. Yeah, both we, air conditioners. Yeah, we can run both ACs. We've got a uh, um, three 1500 uh, watt heaters we can run all those um, we've got you know quite a few loads on the RV and we've never ran into any issue where we haven't been able to provide uh, enough power from the inverters to supply them and enough power from the batteries and enough power from the batteries uh, with the uh, solar setup so far you know we've only had it during the winter but uh, we have run uh, the AC for three or four hours at a time on the batteries and uh, been completely comfortable in doing so. Okay, so for the setup, um, we've got two Quattro um, 3 kVA inverters. Yep. Uh, I think they're each capable of supplying around 2,400 watts sustained. Um, so we get about 4,800 watts between the two, plus quite a bit um, for peak, you know, startup loads and whatnot for the air conditioners. Yeah, 6K surge. Yeah. Right, from each one? Yeah. So each one of these, um, the output is going through a, a distribution box into a uh, auto transformer that's over there, which is one of my favorite parts of the system. Um, what that effectively does is it will load balance the load in the RV across the two inverters. So um, the Victron equipment comes with a lot of uh, information, um, you know, statistics and things that you can get from it. And it's really neat to see how close L1 and L2 track, you know, coming from these inverters. You know, it's, it's basically perfectly load balanced across them. Even though my L1 for load may be 1500 watts and L2 may be 30. Right, so um, what happens, essentially what he's saying is the auto transformer is configured in a balanced configuration. So you've got inverter one contributing half of the 50 amp panel, inverter two contributing the other half of the 50 amp panel. Being that it's an RV, there's only 120 volt loads. There's not really a situation where like both L1 and L2 or side one and side two of the main panel are going to be balanced. So the auto transformer balances them. So if he has 1500 watts on one side and pretty much nothing on the other side, effectively you get 750 watts on both sides through the auto transformer, which means now both inverters are equally doing work rather than 
like one inverter taking a priority of the loads, like yeah. a majority of the load in most cases. Yeah, and where that comes in really useful is if, say, for L1, I wanted to run you know, the AC and the microwave, that's going to be too much for one inverter to sustain for a long period of time. Load balancing the load between the two inverters, uh, it's a comfortable load for them to take on. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like both of your air conditioners running, you said earlier, it was like 2,700 watts. So yes. that auto transformer's limitation is a difference of 3,800 watts, which is not even possible on your particular configuration. So Right. Yeah. There's no possible way that we can uh, have enough amperage uh, drawn across that neutral to cause an issue. All right, let's talk about the charge controllers. So the solar is six 325 watt panels in two strings, each one coming into a uh, individual charge controller. So we've got uh, three panels on this controller, three panels on this controller. Um, and uh, that goes into the 48 volt bus um, that goes across there. My, my batteries are located behind that false wall. Um, and there's uh, four Simplify, or Simplify? Yeah, Simplify. Um, 3.8 uh, kilowatt batteries, so that gives me a total of about 15.2 kilowatts total. Uh, total usable capacity is 15. So actually, if you, if you come down here, you can kind of see the DC bus over here. That's effectively where he has his batteries tied in. And he's got them all behind the false wall back here. There's a there's a storage compartment there. So it's uh, everyone's goal to try to maintain as much storage space as possible with these RVs. And I think James did a really good job of kind of fitting this equipment in where it, where it can go to um, kind of keep it. Yeah, it was tight. it was very much a puzzle, kind of just throwing it all on the wall and trying to figure out where it fit best. And I had to move quite a few pieces around to get it to where I was happy with it. I had a design laid out on paper, but when it came to actually putting it together, I wasn't happy with it and I had to, to re redesign it a few times. But as you can see, my, my pass-through storage is really unaffected. This used to be a false wall oh, okay. um, to protect this plumbing back here, but uh, you know, it really um, opened it up to remove this false wall and I had tons of room for all the equipment behind here. Behind there, I've just got a water heater and then a ton of empty space. So I had plenty of room for the batteries and I even have room to add more batteries if I choose to in the future. Well, yeah, you just add one. Yeah. So now you're at 15 kilowatt hours. So we put together the system with the, the Venus, right? right? So that you can do monitoring. What advantage does that offer you? So the uh, VRM, um, statistics have given me the ability to really dig in and analyze the system and figure out how to best configure it for my needs. The Victron equipment is all extremely configurable and you're not stuck with just a, an out-of-the-box configuration. You can make it what you need of it. Uh, so that would not be possible or would not be possible to get it as tuned in as I have it without that data. Um, in addition to that, I know, you know what my utilization is on any given day. I can kind of use that as a as a base figure to you know determine what my usual, utilization might be on another similar day, and I can budget uh, you know uh, my power utilization accordingly if I need to. If there's gonna be a bunch of rainy days or cloudy days or sometimes when I won't get solar, it's easy to account for that um, with all that data. Otherwise, I'd be shooting in the dark. Fair enough. And then the last bit, which is desirable from a lot of client's point of view but not always implemented was the auto gen start right so um should your system fall short uh based on pb input and whatnot uh your system fully capable of autonomous auto generator start and you know recharge essentially of the batteries how do you have that set up so we use the uh, relays on the Victron equipment to automatically start the generator. There's uh, actually a ton of configurability there. So I was saying everything is really configurable. Generator start. You have tons of criteria you can start it on. I have it starting on low voltage situations, low state of charge situations, um, uh, fault situations. Basically, uh, the system knows when to start the generator. It automatically starts it. And 
will automatically stop it when the situation has resolved. So for example, if I uh, run down to 20% battery, I have it start the generator, and then I have it stop it when it gets to 90%. Um, in addition to that, you know, there's uh, a lot of configurability for the quiet hours. So if I'm in a place where I don't want the generator to run during a, a certain specific period of time, I can configure that. I had that before with the Onan auto start system that came with the generator, um, but it's uh, far more configurable. There's a lot more criteria you right. can set there. We have it set up, I think, right, if the battery is full, below 20% on a normal condition, it'll start the generator and run. Right. But during quiet hours, if the batteries fall below 10% or below something 10%, like that. And then it will stop when it gets up to 50% instead right. of doing a full charge. So, you know, maybe you're only charging for like an hour or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one of the advantages. So, last bit, pretty much the last thing before we kick out of here. And uh, it, what does Northern Arizona Wind and Sun offer that's unique to anybody else? Well, I went in you know, having done a ton of research and having an idea of what I thought I wanted. And then I went to Northern Arizona Wind and Sun to look at buying the components and was given a bunch of information that I, I didn't know about. I didn't run across. So I had no idea, you know, about the 48 volt systems versus the 12 volt systems and the advantages that would give to me. And I didn't run across that on any of the normal RV solar, you know, websites or, or forums. Um, if I didn't have that information, I would have had a system that really wouldn't have met my needs. And um, I think that is very much thanks to Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Great. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Uh, visit our website, send us an email. The website is linked in the description below. Um, it was a pleasure getting with you, and I'm glad we can make this happen. Thank you, James. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.